Welcome back, guys. Here we are once again. The Alien Intruders Piercing the Cosmic Veil Show. We have another wonderful um, event for you tonight. We have a special guest down here, Laura Maxwell. And you all know Mr. Joseph Jordan, Corey Andrews, Corey Pressler, Lee Arn, and the one and only Jason December. Take it away, Lee. Yes, thank you, Jason. And today we do have a very special guest, Laura Maxwell. Um, Laura is here to share her testimony. She was an ex spiritist and she was doing things like um, seances, um, you know, communicating with the dead. Part of her story is quite tragic, and we're lucky enough that she is able to explain to us because this may indeed help people. So we'd like to welcome Laura to the show. Welcome, Laura. It's been um, a long time coming and you're finally here and good to have you here. And Laura, would you please explain to us um, how things came about for you? Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show, guys. Oh. Really appreciate it. Um, since about 2009, I've been a guest on TV and radio shows around the world. Um, I've written for books, magazines, even education books um, that have went across New Zealand and Australia some years ago, um, teaching children about the dangers of the occult, witchcraft, and so on, because that was my background along with my mother. Um, so I came out of all that. 1996, I was involved for 10 years with my mum. Came out 1996 when, I'll explain later what happened there. Since then, I have been sharing with other people. The last 10 years, I have saw people come out of that, find Jesus, get set free from demonic attack, whether that's in the form of so-called aliens or ghosts and so on. Mm. Um, Laura, you had, um, I just want to talk about your mother a little bit more. She really uh, opened that door into this whole spiritual world that um, she became involved in. Do you want to talk a little bit about what sort of things she was practicing, what modalities, um, and some of the experiences that happened to her. And then you also became involved in that and you learnt through her and something shifted to make you see the truth in what was actually happening. Could you share with us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, she had always been interested in the paranormal, new age, is there life after death? Is there a God? These kinds of questions. And she had, throughout her life, certain experiences, psychic phenomenon, um, experiences with what she thought were spirits and so on. So when I was a young teenager, she um, started to attend spiritualist church here in Scotland and I went with her. We, um, she had already saw what we thought were ghosts at home and she wanted to develop to become a medium and they of course encouraged this. And um, we, as well as communicating with so-called ghosts, we were also taught the new age, new thought, um, teaching whereby there are basically spirit guides who are guiding the earth. So we were taught this and of course, it might sound a little bizarre for people that haven't heard of this, but there was ample evidence for this to be true. Therefore we accepted it. You know, plenty doctors, plenty scholars, scientists, very clever academics believe this stuff too, um, because there is evidence and mm. hard proof. Mm. Therefore, we go into that. Um, and 
I um, drew, through my childhood, I had had dreams of um, alien spacecraft landing all over the world, really to attack people and to kill us all. And when I was 13, 12 or 13, my mum's aunt, who was also a spiritualist, she and I saw a UFO um, in the sky. So it only fueled um, more of our interest in that whole arena. Laura, hey, Laura. I got a... Whoa. Go, go ahead, Jay-Z. Tiana, just quick question. You were a teenager when this when this all started. I Where was... Where was the father figure, or did you have one? What was going on with the with the father figure in your life at that? Up until that point, my dad didn't like anything like that, and he wasn't religious or spiritual in any way. He didn't want us involved in anything like that. So my mother and I would look at paranormal ghost stories on TV, etc., when he was out the house. Mm. So it wasn't till they divorced when I was about 12, 13, and that's when we fully went into it um, and started going to uh, New Age meetings, spiritualist church meetings, seances, um, yoga, meditation, started getting into astrology, all that. The kind of a New Age, yes. which of course isn't New Age at all. It's old, it's, it's pagan, it's... <laughs> Yeah. Ancient yeah. teachings, actually. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Laura, I know people are recognizing you have a different accent than most of us here. Um, tell people that are watching this where you're at right now and where you're from. Um, I was born in Glasgow, Scotland, mm -hmm. in the UK, and my husband and I still live here. Okay, the question I have about that is... You're looking at our group here, and we're representing four different cultures here. Um, I'm in South Korea, Lee's in Australia, you're in Scotland, and Jason and the two Corys are in America. So all the different cultures of all four of these countries are different from each other. Mm -hmm. So asking about Scotland, how prominent is spiritualism in Scotland how does it go back a long way is it prominent in the society yes and um, it's become more popular now over the last well I left it obviously 20 odd years ago it's become more popular sorry 30 25 years ago it's become more popular now but um, yes, and more people are doing psychic workshops, channeling workshops. You see these things happening in the Starbucks cafe or yeah. restaurants. Oh. It's far more open now. When we were into it, it was still popular, but under the umbrella of going to spiritualist church um, rather than going to a ghost haunting session or whatever, it was the spiritualist church of Great Britain. Um, that we went to and that had been going on for yes a long time um, and obviously they would go every week every Sunday Saturday we would go for the so-called psychic healing where healings took place but Sunday was the service kind of a look like a typical church service there would be singing there would be a bit of a message and then the medium on the platform would go into trance and give messages allegedly from the dead uh, to the congregation and so on. In Scotland, is there is a presence of, of Christianity. What's, what's more dominant? Is it Catholicism or Protestantism? Um, I would say it's really quite a mix of both. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the Church of Scotland, which is the Protestant church and, and Catholic churches. Um, there are Baptist, Gospel Brethren, Pentecostal. Um, but yeah, there is, there is still that divide here with football games can be quite, 
a raucous when, when sometimes like, the, the football fans will fight. Like in Ireland. Because of the, because of the, the that divide. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Laura. Another thing, another thing I wanted to point out that, and she's already brought it up, and we're going to talk more about it uh, as we get into this, is even though we brought her on as a ex spiritualist and talking about uh, her work and her former past into that and coming out of it, she's already made the allusion to experiencing UFO phenomenon, um, especially in her younger days, younger mm -hmm. earlier life, and that's. The kind of connection we want to be able to show here and we'll explore that more as uh, the questions come out thanks laura go ahead jason laura your accent is amazing it gives me joy thank you yes <laughs> I, I, love love it. It. I love it your, love your it. accent is wonderful i <laughs> once again i got delivered some joy so thank you quick question for you what do you think about um what do you think and have you seen a push or a change in some of these um, television offerings, such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, cable cable television, Hollywood, have you seen a significant increase yourself in the television shows that are being promoted in regards to witchcraft, Satanism, Luciferianism, occult, uh, paranormal, uh, alien? I mean, if 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 because I'm sure the whole team here has noticed if you go to your Netflix application or if you have it on television or your or your prime video it's virtually impossible to find a, t a movie or a television sh television series that does not have something to do with satan mm. with aliens with the occult or with witchcraft mm -hmm. at least that's what i'm seeing mm -hmm. so i mean I'm, sh I'm sure you going through this uh, as a teenager and going through this full gamut you must you must be taken back by what's happening today that's being pushed upon um, the world. Yes and no, because back when we were into it, um, we were taught that the plan, and that, mm -hmm. that was the words used, the plan for humanity, um, that the spirit guides were bringing humanity into, the plan was to introduce all these types of new age teachings, um, to, to, to the world in a much greater way, to every aspect of society, education, uh, media, medicine, te technology, everything like that, so that the whole, everyone in the world would be exposed to New Age teachings, witchcraft teachings, etc. Specifically because these um, spirit guides would channel and say, the world is about to enter into the, the fulfillment of the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And to do that, the, the earth, the world has to evolve. People on the earth are not very spiritually evolved and they have to evolve because of the things that are coming into the world, the, you know, pollution, corruption, all the, the things that are happening in the planet. They foresaw this. They told us that they saw this eons ago and that they were here to try and help us to evolve spiritually so we were taught the plan was no matter what career you get into no matter what social life you are involved in spread the new age message everywhere and they predicted that in a short time it will be everywhere and that was only 20 25 years ago we were told right. that and then we began to see yes it was taken off much more in a couple of decades basically the plan has happened it has took place they have achieved it that's interesting because well, through my experience the people that were coming in my life eight years ago it was the it was the basically it was mine was centralized to ufo alien abduction um syndrome and the people that were coming into my life it was the ascension we have to ascend mm -hmm. right yeah. so it, it parallels exactly what you're talking about go ahead lee Oh, um, just just wanted to say that you can also see the influence of the New Age occult moving into the churches now. Yep, absolutely. Um, we have Bethel Church or, or, you know, those churches are doing um, 
these uh, modalities that are occult, but they're hiding them under a different kind of disguise and they're slipping through, particularly for people who aren't solid Christians and aren't able to discern that this is actually an occult thing. Um, and it's really concerning. It's very concerning. Very much so. And I've saw that here in Scotland, um, across many Pentecostal churches. That's really so sad. Um, I have saw them believing they are getting messages from angels mm. and even dead preachers, even people from the Bible, John the Baptist or Isaiah, or mm. and they even say they can now get messages from the great cloud of witnesses the Bible talks about. Um, and I have actually tried to share with folks, you know, the Bible says we cannot actually do that. We can't speak to the dead. Mm. The dead in heaven or hell, we cannot speak to them. doesn't matter if it's John the Baptist or Elijah or Ezekiel, whoever. <laughs> we can't. Um, and yet they've been taken in by it. But interestingly, sometimes I have had some success in sharing this with Christians and they have tested it, as the Bible says, test the spirit. Test the spirit. Um, and indeed, they have found that the so-called angel or other Bible character or, or dead preacher was not who he said he was. Mm. Um, typical scenario, getting attacked by them, coming out of that, getting deliverance from that, because we do need deliverance when we're involved in anything um, that is demonic, receiving deliverance from it. And interesting, isn't it, that any of us who were into these things, once we received deliverance from these things, repented of them, the phenomena stops. Yes. You know, I, I left mm. that area for 20 years and not now, since I left them, not once has any so-called ghost or so-called alien tried to attack me. Not mm. once. Mm. Laura, an, an uncomfortable question. Did you convert people to spiritualism? <sighs> yes. Thankfully, not that many. Um, and I don't know that they stayed in it all that long. It may just have been a passing fad because I was a teenager um, and in my early 20s. But yes, I took people to Spiritualist Church. Yeah, I did the same when I was in the New Age realm. That was my mission, was to convert as many as possible. Exactly. We were told to do that. That was, death. That was the, the plan. Um, yeah. and, and when you have beings that claim to be ascending masters, and we didn't like using the word aliens, that didn't sound a nice term to use for them. Ascending masters, right. spirit guides, mm -hmm. coming through at seances and so on, telling you what to do. You're not going to doubt them. You tend to just obey, don't you? Because you think you're being spiritual and you're chosen. Yes. Mm. Good points. Yeah. Corey. Laura, <clears throat> can I ask you uh, what happened in the moments leading up to your UFO sighting, bef the moments before, during, and after? Like, uh, yeah. describe how you felt, like, uh, and what you were doing. Like, what, what were you doing before you had your UFO sighting? Like, uh, I'll just let you talk. Well, my aunt, who was also a spiritualist and into New Age, she was taking me home. Um, I had been at her house and we used to talk about all these things. We loved all that type of thing. And literally we were going home. It was very dark. There were some, the sky was pitch black. There were stars in the sky. And we saw all of a sudden what at first we thought was a shooting star mm. shot straight across so we both looked at it it seemed to come out of nowhere it shot across in a completely straight line and then it stopped 
so we stopped and we both stared at it. Um, it stopped and then after a few minutes, at least one minute, it then suddenly just reversed very, very fast and disappeared. Mm. So we didn't know, could that be, a, could it be an aircraft, a human aircraft that can maneuver like that? We weren't sure. We, we felt that it was a UFO just because of the heightened spiritual energies, spiritual vibrations that as New Agers we were used to in having mystical experiences. And by, um, by UFO, you mean ET? Like, did, did at your time, at the time of the sighting, did in your mind, did it translate over to ET? In or, our or minds, did you we think of something else. In our minds, we wondered if it was perhaps spacecraft or any other phenomena that are given to sometimes describe these things, but we assumed that it was a alien aircraft just because of the way it maneuvered. And also because of the, the sort of a mystical feelings that we felt when it was happening. Um, yeah. But I also had, as a child, recurring dreams of alien UFO craft all around the world landing and killing people. That dream was a recurring dream I had throughout my teens and 20s. Um, which again, it would it would be very the, the sense in the dream would be very evil. I would experience the what they would term sleep paralysis. Sometimes when this happened, I would literally be attacked by evil spirits as well. The, the typical phenomena people describe when that happens that would happen to me as well. Right, um, Laura, when that happened to you, sleep paralysis and you felt attacked, what was it in your mind you thought that was? I did think it was um, spiritual because of the, the lifestyle we were uh, leading and the beliefs that we had, and simply because so many other people that I knew experienced the same. And it wouldn't always just be when you were asleep because some people might say, well, you were just sleeping, it was just a dream. Mm. No, it also would happen when we were awake. Um, and to be fully awake and suddenly paralyzed, cannot move your body, cannot speak, and sometimes see evil spirits in the room or a shadow figure, feel them touching you, feel them moving you about, mm. then you're not just imagining it. Um, and my mother certainly experienced that as well. Yeah. Mm. So if if you were feeling um, like you were being touched or there's that presence or you felt it was a negative experience, did you at any um, point in your mind think that it could be demonic or it's just, were you sort of looking at those kind of things back then? We believed that there were evil spirits and evil okay. aliens because right. we were taught that within the new age. They, they do believe there are good ghosts, bad ghosts, if you like, good okay. aliens, bad aliens, and that they can, there is a war going on um, and they can affect you. Um, and of course they would teach that the um, good spirit guides should help you and you know bring you through any any attacks mm -hmm. uh, that, that you experience so when you say demonic yes we believed in demonic but not in the biblical sense of de mm -hmm. demonic mm -hmm. um, we did not believe in the bible um and so on we were taught the opposite we were actually taught in the new age that um jesus the bible is not true Jesus is not true. He he was actually just a reincarnation of Star God's alien ascended masters, and that um, Lucifer is actually God. Lucifer is God. He came from Venus, um, 
and he will be the one who will return um, to, to culminate the age of Aquarius. There, there will be um, chaos in the world, there will be gl global climate, ca absolute chaos, wars, etc., corruption in government, etc. And mm. all these alien beings and spirit guides are um, really working for Lucifer to bring world peace and to unite everyone in, in the last days um, under him. Mm. So when you say demonic, yes, we believe demonic, but, but not in the sense that the Bible says. Right, okay. Hey, Laura, I, when these spirit guides were contacting you and your mother, would, was it separately or would it be the same entity at the same time talk to both of you? or would they separate you when they would communicate? Um, well, a mixture of things really. Also, obviously through other mediums and that spiritualist church, that would happen. Um, I wasn't as advanced as my mother. She was channeling them. She was doing automatic writing where she believed she was writing they would give her information, she would write it down, she channeled them. Um, but at that time I was a teenager, early 20s, so I wasn't into it as much as her and I wasn't channeling as such these beings, but I was being attacked by them, yes. And I, I did see things and things did happen around me, whether my mum was there or not. Mm. Hey, Laura, you... you... You said that your mother and father got divorced. I'm trying to get a grasp of if you were my daughter and I was, I was know I knew this was happening with you and your mother. That had to be tough on him, and that had to be tough on the relationship with you. How, how, how was that for you? Did you continue a relationship with him? Do you have one with him today? What, what was, what were his thoughts as all this was happening? Because he obviously knew it was going on. He knew it was going on and, and he was in the house sometimes when things happened um, and also when they were divorced obviously he would come back visit and he did see stuff and he knew stuff. Um, he was actually frightened I believe because he never really spoke about it very much other than that he didn't want me involved um, and he never told any of our family what he knew. In fact, sometimes when him and I were with his family, if anything like that was brought up in conversation, he would laugh and make a joke about it being nonsense. And yet I would know, oh, wow, he knows it's mm. true. Mm. Um, he just couldn't go there, I think. And um, also, I think because he, he, he didn't have any spiritual beliefs himself, he didn't know how to help. Right. And... Um, he actually, two years ago, he came to the Lord Praise just God. before he passed Jesus. away. Awesome. Wonderful. Amen. And he, we spoke about all these things and he, he actually had been watching a lot of my interviews and so on on YouTube mm -hmm. and other people that I'd recommended to him, apologetics, professors of, in universities around the world who prove Jesus Christ really did live dying the cross, resurrection really did happen, the Bible really is true. My dad watched all that stuff during his uh, months of battling cancer. And yeah, so he did. You know, isn't, that, isn't that interesting how, how the Lord works? You know, I mean, what if you would have never gone through those experiences? He may have never gotten really, he never mm. may have found Jesus. So when we look back in retrospect, sometimes we yeah. can see that we go through years and years of torment. We go through these wild experiences, but look at the end. He came to Christ right before he passed away, and we know exactly where he is right now. Um, before we start back into the questioning, Laura was leaving off where talking about her dad coming to Christ um, in his later years, and it was through people being able to show him the evidence, you know, that Christ was real. I think it really happened. And I just want to point out there's a favorite piece out there that I'd like to share with people that question it, you know, the reality 
uh, it, it's a powerful book. And I think everybody ought to have a copy of it. If you have somebody that says, no, no, that wasn't real, you know, just, just give the copy to them. It's worth it because it, it, it changed the author's life and it, it could change somebody else's. And it, it's this one, you know, The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. It's absolutely yep. phenomenal. You know, if you, if you get through this and still don't believe, you got problems. You know, I got to tell you. <laughs> um, but the, the question, I want to go back to a, to, to one that, uh, a point that Laura brought up. And I think this one needs to be uh, talked about and elaborated on a little more. There's a lot of discussion in the uh, paranormal realm and the UFO realm about sleep paralysis. And, and she talked about that. But there's very, very little talked about this aspect of awake sleep paralysis, which she, she mentioned. And I'd like to get her to talk a little bit more and explain that, how that happens, what the experience is like, because it's actually a little different than being asleep and experiencing sleep paralysis, because you're fully awake when it happens. Laura, can you give us some more in-depth about that? Because I think this is one that really needs to be covered in-depth because it, I don't see it talked about a lot. I mean, I've only heard about it really mentioned a couple times. You're, you're the third time I've heard this in the 20-some years I've been doing this. I know that it happens to people, but I don't hear it talked about. And I think that this is a good time to bring it forward now that you brought mm, it out. It is, yeah. Yeah, Um it happened to my mother and I and exactly the same as sleep paralysis but whilst you're awake and also um, you literally see something in the room things move, you literally are being attacked um, physically attacked and not able to do anything about it, you're not able to shout on help from anyone else in the room. You cannot move your body. And the, the, the evil presence is overwhelming. Mm. And you know it's spiritual, um, even though physical activity can happen. My mother experienced it whilst being raped by so-called ghosts, so-called alien spirit guides. Um, I had experiences of it as well, where there would, yes, there would be someone else in the room and I couldn't talk to the person, couldn't ask for their help. Um, sometimes, for examples, when that type of thing was happening, my husband would be in the room and he would hear the same noise I heard or see the same shadow figure that I saw, etc. So it couldn't just be, well... So I'm wait a second. You're having... You're having the experience and somebody else is present not having the experience and you're in the same presence. Yes, in the same room. Yes. Wow. What Interestingly, what would often happen though would be if, if my husband walked in the room um, or a relative came in the room, the, the experience would stop and it would almost be as if the entities did not want any witnesses to know what was going on. And mm. even when my mother, I left house um, to, to move in with Paul and we were moving furniture and so on, that day the demonic really rattled the place. And, but they, they, but they, all, they always stopped doing it when the removal men walked in the room. But when they were out the room, the, the doors were slamming, the you know, wow. furniture was moving around. And we actually hoped that the removal men would see it so that we had witnesses and so that they could maybe help us, but it would stop immediately they step back into the house. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and over the, the years of, of talking to people and researching it, I've, I have heard of this happening, even with um, people, celebrities and so on, who have came out and said they had such experiences with whether they believed it to be ghosts or whether they believed it to be aliens, where, yes, they were attacked and their friend or their partner was sitting in the room and saw certain things happen. 
So, you know, was it just a hallucination um, and so on? And a few years ago, I did a series um, of radio interviews on the topic spectrophilia, mm. sex with ghosts and alien spirit guides, because it was becoming a craze just a few years ago. People were sharing how they were doing this. It was on TV here in Britain, good morning TV shows of mediums, of yes. channelers who were saying they were having sex with, with ghosts. Mm. Um, other celebrities started coming out and admitting that they had been doing it and it got to where it was actually getting promoted as a good thing. Mm. And I went online and saw there were lots and lots of new age websites, medium websites, telling you how to initiate contact with a spirit and initiate a sexual relationship with such a spirit. Now, it's rather bizarre because down throughout history, um, different cultures and so, so on have reported um, this happening to them, but they didn't want it to happen to them. They were being hit, raped and so on. So for this swing in the culture to promoting it as if this is a good thing, is really quite bizarre. And I felt just another sign of the, the end times that, that we are in, in the biblical timeline. Yeah. It's craziness. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, could I just read, because Joseph, when you asked what was that like and what did it feel like and, and so on, this quote from uh, Whitley Stryber, mm -hmm. I don't know if I pronounced that properly, Whitley Stryber, he was a ufologist, I believe, and wrote a book, Transformation. This is what he said. I felt an absolute indescribable sense of menace. It was hell on earth to be there in the presence of these entities. And yet I couldn't move, couldn't cry, couldn't get away. I lay as still as death, suffering inner agonies. Whatever was there seemed so monstrously ugly, so filthy, dark and sinister. Of course they were demons. They had to be. He's mm. a ufologist. Um, I find it very interesting that, uh, that a lot of UF scholars and even those who have been regarded as main guys in the field of ufology, not Christian at all. And mm. yet at least half a dozen that I've noticed that have said similar, that they believe the phenomena is demonic and that these entities can act and behave and have the same supernatural abilities demons in the Bible had. And I think that's amazing that these guys are not Christian, and yet they've said that. Um, John Keel, Jacques Fillet, Carol Sagan, Arthur C. Clarke, who have actually said that, and yet they're not Christian. So mm. very, very interesting that they should indeed I'm sure. Say I'm that. sure you guys here on the panel and you, Laura, and um, really everybody out there has heard the, the terms incubus and succubus, mm. right? Yes. So yep. I just decided to look into those and I put succubus in here first as a, as a demon of, or supernatural entity in folklore um, in female form that appears in dreams to seduce men usually through sexual activity. According to religious traditions, repeated sexual activity with a succubus can cause poor physical or mental health. And then below this article is a list of succubus movies. So if you want to watch movies through from Hollywood about succubus movies, and they start with movies like oh Succubus, uh, Death by Temptation, Saint Sinner is about a succubus, Demon Hunter, um, The Devil's Nightmare, Hellbent, and then there's the succubus game. So if you want to get on your oh, alien your alien computer <laughs> and you want to start playing games, you can play games that have to do with succubus and incubus. Oh, gosh. They make Be a lot of depraved with, video games nowadays. Mm. <laughs> they're going to get you at every angle. Every angle they're going to get you. They're going to get you. I often wonder whether in uh, with the ET experience, uh, having um, an experience where a Pleiadian comes to them and this Pleiadian woman is making love to them, whether um, that's just the, the succubus in disguise at that time to allow that scene to happen 
I think so because mm. I've heard time and time again and my mother um, told me from what she experienced and I've heard time and time again, people, whether it's um, all these different alien races out there, there's meant to be hundreds or thousands of them, um, Arcturians, Andromedans, mm. um, the list goes on, Pleiadians, Anunnaki, the Intergalactic Federation of Light, the Council of Elohim, on and on and on. Mm. And people who have channeled these so-called aliens will, will say that like that, they can literally change their image to look like a certain entity, but it, they can morph and look like another entity. Um, it's the very fact they can change <laughs> their appearance. Um, and people say, for example, doing this channeling mediums, channelers, light workers, channeling these beings, whether it's a so-called ghost or a so-called spirit guide, Pleiadian, etc., that mm. a lot of people have said they caught them out telling lies and things were becoming inconsistent about where they said what uh, planet they were from or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they caught them out with the lies and even would challenge them in Jesus' name in the name of yeah. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Hallelujah. show me your true form. Whoa, Hallelujah. suddenly that yeah. ghost Every, of your dead Hallelujah. grand, that Hallelujah. spirit guide from Pleiades or wherever, morphs into a demon, screams, tries to attack you sometimes as well before it leaves. Yep. And also so yes. interesting that the message these entities bring, whether they're so-called ghosts or so-called aliens, fairies, gnomes, whatever the person is channeling, mermaids even, um, who are meant to be coming from Atlantis that are a, a group of aliens from under the ocean, which, surprise, surprise, we hear UFOs sometimes come, ship comes out of the mm. ocean. These Atlanteans of old are going to come back and save the world with these other aliens from outer space. They're all going to come back and save the world, etc. It's a false gospel. Amen. Amen. It's an alien gospel because... One of the things they all say is that Jesus Christ is not God. The mm. Bible is not real. That That's is the, the one thing they, they agree on. Tend yep. to say the one thing That's they right, agree Corey. on. That's right. They don't care if you if you worship Buddha mm. or Krishna or Hindu gods right. or whatever. In fact, they yeah. even teach that all the gods in the world, all the gods, goddesses, entities, all of that are actually gods from out of space who were here eons and eons ago and they are yes. who we actually worship and that's why we worship them because they all came down and moved to different continents and taught different religions to each continent because that's who they were from mm -hmm. i.e jesus christ is a reincarnation of one of many savior gods yep, who heard that heard that yep, yep, we were taught too. the zeitgeist theory jesus is just a reincarnation of many gods who have been down through history and in fact he is an alien and i, I noticed the vatican have been teaching that the vatican yes. observatory vatican oh, that's observatory. where the ecumenical they movements come in from yes Absolutely. the pope and the jesuits have alluded to that which is exactly what i was taught back in the 80s would happen the plan we will take over the world's system of thinking whole world view whereby religions will all be um religions will all come to realize this um governments media everyone will come to realize this that we've been fed a lie by uh, the various teachings that have been going on and that yes we are all descended we're all star seeds we're all descended from aliens from different whether it's pleiades or are the arcturians or mm -hmm. <laughs> and well, this all feeds into that whole agenda that's now um definitely taken off and it is it is it is laura it is taking off and what i want people to understand is that it's not ha going to happen there's going to be sent a strong delusion and we are in the delusion right now and yeah. there's a lot going on that i'm not going to get into because i don't want our channel taken down but i think you guys know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. there's there's many tentacles at work at the same time right now 
But, but more important than that is that if there's anybody watching and listening to Laura, listening to this show, I want, and if anybody has decided to look into the occult or the supernatural or the alien agenda or whatever it may be, or maybe you're having experiences like you're hearing now, maybe you've been having them, maybe you're fearful, maybe you're getting, maybe they started off good and interesting and now they've changed. I want everybody to know that if you are in a situation where you're in fear and you're being attacked in any way, shape, or form, you can, by the authority of Jesus Christ, ask them to be removed from you. And it's that simple. It sounds cliche and it sounds, it may sound silly to some people, but I've experienced it myself. I know Laura's experienced, I know everybody on the panels has experienced this, and I know that somebody's watching this right now, and I just want you to know that it can be stopped, and it's that simple. And if you ask Tim to come in your heart, he will, and he'll change your life. And like Laura said,